Hi, all you wonderful and creative humans. I'm Pixie, and this is Pixie's Projects. If you visited before, welcome back. And if you're new, welcome in. Today, we're going to do a video on dip pens and how I use them in coloring books and for journaling. Stay tuned. <music> But we're just going to get started looking at a few dip pens and some inks and I'm going to show you some tricks on how to get them to work for most of your products for coloring and journaling. So we have my thinnest glass pen here and has a very very fine tip. I cannot see my monitor so I'm hoping that this is showing up for you but it is is tiny tiny tiny. Okay. I'm just going to close this box up and get it out of the way. And if you've seen um, Tammy Colors 2, she had purchased this box kit with a dip pen set. And I'm going to pull that out. Because after she had purchased it, I too had to purchase it because it had a nice set of inks. Um, inside here we have a glass pen holder. Excuse me, I'm having a little trouble getting it out. It sets up like this and it keeps the ink from getting onto too much of your stuff and keeps the pen from rolling away and getting damaged. We also have a little bit bigger dip pen tip here and then we have a larger one here. We have a pen cleaning cup which we are not going to use because I have this very large vial of water here which you'll see because we need it for quite a few things. And then we have seven inks that come with the kit. I am going to open one of these and show you that first, just so you can see what an ink made for a dip pen looks like and how that works in comparison to the things we have to do to color. Um, let me just move that out of our way. I am going to make a giant mess right now because these have rubber stoppers and I don't take them out till I use them. So I will have ink on my hands. Um, I was thinking about getting a rubber glove for this bit and then just decided to not do it because it doesn't matter to me really. Um, almost in, I'm just trying to be a little gentle. There we go. And as you can see, I have ink. Um, I'm going to give this a little shake. This has some gold dust in it that gives us a little bit of a, you can see it here at the bottom. It gives us a little shimmer to our inks. Um, it's not a lot, so I don't even know if you'll be able to actually see that in the video. And I'm using some leftover pieces of dot gridded paper. And I've just dripped all over my mat, of course. What a mess. Okay, that's all right. We'll clean that up as best we can later. Probably need a new mat after that. Um, Anyway, so you just take your dip pen and it is a messy thing if you're using something that had that rubber stopper on it. It is normally not that messy. So we'll just start off by writing something because we can. Let's get a little more going. All right, here we go. And this is with my very, very fine tipped pen. I'm showing you this so that you can see how easily the ink flows when it's the correct ink. Um, because with coloring, we're gonna be using a lot of inks that aren't correct. And I've been asked by a few people to do these videos, so I'm trying to get one together for you. And I think to know how to use something poorly, you have to use know how to use something the right way first. So I'm just cleaning off this purple ink so that you can see that is what it looks like when you write with the ink that comes with it or ink that is, um, liquidy enough for what we need it to do okay so there we go and you can see that's quite liquidy we've got it literally everywhere um now we're going to move on to a black india ink which is supposed to be able to be used by these pens and you're going to have to determine whether or not that works for you um because to me it's a bit thick and I'm going to show you how to like let get this stuff a little bit less thick for you. So I should be able to start this and I cannot see how it will not move. So we're going to clean our brush. 
or dip pen, sorry. And before I get any further with this, I do want to stop for a second and just to let you know that there are parts to the pen. This is called the handle. This is called the beveled chamber where it's got the swirls. And then we have the tip. So I pulled out just a regular palette and I've got my black India ink and I'm putting it into the well. And you can see it's taking it a minute to move because it's a little sluggy. So we've got a pipette. We're taking our dirty water because that's what we have. And we're dropping it into the ink to lessen the amount of thickness that it has. And we're just going to give it a little swirl with the pen and swirl the pen in the ink. Now this looks to be about the right consistency. Maybe it's a little light because I'm not seeing a very dark color. But we can write with it. And it's gray because I've overwatered it. So it really is a matter of consistency and playing and trying to figure out exactly what you need to get the desired effect that you want. So I've pulled out a bunch of inks and the Econo line watercolors are very good for this. So if I can open this because I'm weak and I close them very tight because they are ink and they will spill and they'll leave stains. Um, so I'm dipping into that, which I believe is on screen. So I think my whole little mat is. And then I'm going to write with this. So you can see how it writes. And if it doesn't start immediately, I just push it down like very gently and try again. And usually that gets the ink to start flowing. Um, I've been asked how much you can write. With this little bit on the pen, I could probably write the whole alphabet and then some. Um, what else? We'll write pixie because we can. But yeah, you can write for a good long time with a good ink or a good consistency of ink. So there we go. So you've got another word here. And as you can see, we're still not running low at all. I'm going to pick this up a little bit so you can see how wet it is and it still has plenty of ink. So now I'm just going to clean the blue off. And now you've got a fairly good idea, I think, of what happens if you have the right consistency ink. So now for coloring, people have asked me, and it's hard to explain. I'm going to grab some black first because the colors we're using are all metallic or bright or white, I mean. So here you go. Now we have black paper and, like, I have Econoline watercolor, but it's a gold watercolor. It's 801, if you can see that. It's got the shimmer. And this one, oh my goodness. Okay, we're in. So this one is very, you can see how thick the consistency of this is. So it's not going to do what we did with the regular Econo line. So now we have options, okay? And our options are to do what we did with the Black India ink and drop it, and you can see that is very, very, very thick. So what we're going to do with that, and again, I don't care because we're just playing. I'm going to use this dirty water, and I'm going to drop some water into it. I'm going to try and loosen up the thickness or the consistency of it. And I don't feel like that's quite enough, but we're going to find out. And that's what you're going to have to do. You're going to have to have a scrap piece of paper while playing to figure out what you exactly want to do. So with this, I've got it to a consistency where it will write. And if we're coloring with it or adding some um, metallic highlights to something, let's see, this feels a little thick to me. It might give us bits. But that's the thing is if you're coloring with it, you're trying to get enough ink spread out without cutting up the paper or having major problems you're going to have to thin it down to the consistency that you think it needs to be um, and you can tell by playing with it and what i do is tend to keep dipping because of how thick it is if we thin it down too much we lose that opacity that we get from the gold and it's the same with the white so when you see me use these to color I'm not using them as uh, thinned down as I would if I was doing 
um, writing. So let me get that clean. And you can see they clean really easy. You just wipe it down with a paper towel after you wet it. Um, some other things you can do, which I don't think... Well, let's do this first. We'll do the whites first. We have a Winsor Newton white ink, which is a fine ink. Um, if I'm trying to get rid of a line on, like a black line on a coloring page, I will generally go into this stuff as is and use as much as I can which, you know, obviously will not be as much as when I was writing with it because I have it so thinned out. But I will do multiple dips and use it to make whatever I need. And we'll let this stuff dry as we go so you can see where we're headed. Now this one, the white Windsor Newton, doesn't have a dropper in it. And I don't like to use my dropper too much for this because it gets stuck inside. Like, this is as clean as it's going to be where we are, but it's got white all inside of it that doesn't come out. So I don't regularly use this. I will finish this Windsor & Newton ink because I need to. Um, then we have Dr. P.H. Martin's Bombay White and Dr. P.H. Martin's Pen White. I have a set of technical pens, so I bought this for that. Um, it does not work the way I would like it to in the pens, but I have both of these. And this one has been my favorite for quite a while. And all your inks you should shake as you use them. And you should have the lids on really tight. And it's painful to get them open, but that's better than having ink everywhere. So I'm dropping that. You can see that's a little bit liquidy. And we're going to roll our pen in it because this is how I'm choosing to do it. And you can see that I am dripping off of this. So this is very wet. So when I go to use it... Let's see. I can write really well. And the reason I'm using a black piece of paper is so that you can see how opaque it is and how much it will work to cover any kind of line art that you want to cover. You might have to do a second layer depending on what you're working with, but I'm going to actually, let me get a square going here because I want to grab a pencil here at the end because I've never tested it and now I'm curious but I'm wondering if we can color over you know how like if we use it to cover a line if it's possible to go over it with pencil after the fact or if it scratches it off like it does with um what gel pen and Posca and that kind of thing you have to go very carefully with acrylic paint pens if you're going to do over with pencil so that's a nice size square, and it looks like we're going to have to redo it because you're starting to see through. And I'm going to clean my pen again. Then there are some other things that you can use because it isn't, this shouldn't be something that you have to spend a ton of money on. Um, the dip pens are very cheap. You can get them for seven, eight dollars a piece. I think that kit we bought was like 12 or something, or maybe 17. I forget. It was like under 20. Um, so other things that you can use, which are pretty weird. Oh, I've got static. Give me one moment. And we're going to have to switch back to white paper or cream paper. I have just a piece of a package inset. Um, it's just a piece of plastic. And this is much like when you use your Tombos and things like that. I'll, actually, you know what? I'm not going to use the plastic. It'll be better if I do it in here. So I'm inking the inside of my plastic palette and then I'm taking I'll do a paintbrush on this one taking a paintbrush we may get other colors in it but again this is just demonstration purposes so I don't need clean water you should usually have two cups one for clean and one for dirty so you get it dirty and then you put it in the clean just to give it a rinse now for this technique I've had success and I've had not success so we'll see you dab the ink that you've made out of your marker onto your brush or onto your dip pen onto the tip and the beveled chamber and get it in there as much as you can I'll just rinse that real quick and then you can try to write with it um 
the problem with this or the thing you have to consider with this is that you want to mix up enough liquid to do whatever it is you're trying to do. Um, you could color like this. I just don't much see it would be a lot more difficult, I think. But so that's another thing you can do. You can also do the same thing with your watercolors if you're trying to write something. Um, like Johanna from Jojo Sahana, she does quotes on her pages and things. So if you wanted to do something like that, you can also do it with your watercolors. Get a palette, get your watercolors wet, get enough of the watercolor pigment onto your palette, add water to it to the right consistency, and you could probably write a whole quote with a little bit of watercolor. But my point for doing the video was that a lot of the times when you see me use my dip pen, you see when I write, I write and I do it with a very thin ink. If I thin this out, it goes better. If I don't thin it out, I tend to have to work a little harder, but it's better to work harder for me than it is to um, have to go over it too many times and then run the risk also of hurting your paper if you go over too many times, you'll dig up the paper. Like, this isn't quite dry enough. I wouldn't do this in real life. Um, I would use a heat tool or something to dry it up so that I wasn't scratching into wet paper. But I'm being very careful about it, and I'm not digging up the paper as much as I can. So there we go. I have a square of white. So what I was trying to show is that if you're going to use a dip pen for coloring, and you watch pen videos, dip pen videos for draw or writing or drawing, you're going to have to put a little more thickness onto it. And you may have to dip multiple times as opposed to a, you know, once and getting a ton of stuff done with it because it's just not going to work that way for us. Um, but you can use all your metallics with this. Some of the metallics that I really enjoy, like I said, were the e Ecoline Gold. And then the Windsor and Newton Gold, which we'll use a little of that so you can see, because I used the Eco line already. And I did mix this up pretty good. So you just dip in, and this one is fairly wet, so it should just do what we want. But as you can see, this doesn't show as well as the eco line gold. Now I'm going to try and get this mixed up a little more, but I think it's as good as it's going to get. Um, but I have bought numerous kinds of inks to try out with these and to find the things that work for my coloring. And you'll have to do that for yours as well. So you just kind of like push the tip down a smidge to get everything flowing. And then it just, I don't know how well you can see this because it's so sheer. And I, again, I can't see my monitor. So that is the Windsor and Newton gold. And then I have another gold, which is also, oh, this isn't gold, sorry. I have another silver, which is also Windsor and Newton, which you can see here. You can also take acrylic paint and water that down to the same consistency as everything else we've been doing. And you can use that as well. So I love the Windsor and Newton silver. And my favorite gold is the Eco line. And I'm actually going to be doing a video soon on the differences between um, some of the golds and silvers that I have in every medium so that we can see how they work. So that is what the gold looks like or the silver looks like sorry and you can see it's very easy if you're trying to color in one one small area like a frame you know going around the outside of a frame or something it's very easy to get the color on i just keep redipping because i'm lazy and i'm worried about the paper which is a tendency that i have but i've used this on amazon paper i've used this on copy paper you know, you can do whatever you want with it. So, yeah, to write, it's very smooth. I don't have to water this one down to get it to do anything. You have to decide what you're doing with your pen. Because if you want to use it 
for writing very easy and in this case this ink is very easy no matter what but with the whites it is a tendency to need to water them down um like i didn't show the technical white so let me do that next so far you've seen the doctor the ph martin bombay which i almost just threw so that was fun and i've showed the windsor and newton and this is the technical white, which I should also have some trouble opening. Yes. Okay. And this is the technical white. And this is rather gloopy as well. So I'm just going to get in there and see what this does on its own. This is without any sort of effort to thin it out. So I'm getting some writing. It just feels like it wants to be really thin because not enough is coming down the bezel um, because it's so thick. So yeah, even this, this is the technical white. If I take this and spread it out, let's get us a big enough place to work to try out some pencils on top. And you can hear the way the pen sounds on the paper. So look, that's why I like the technical white a lot um, because it just spreads. So I would say in order, it's the Bombay, then the technical, then the Windsor and Newton for me um, for color, for coloring, for using it to color out white spots or add highlights. That's the order of the way I like it to be. So we have different inks. This is India ink. This is the ink that the kit came with. This is using the Ecoline watercolors. We have a marker, a water-based marker that we added water to and got our own ink. You can do it with a watercolor pan set. You can do it with watercolor in tubes just as long as you make a consistency that you can work with. Um, you can also use it with acrylics. Anything that you can water down and use a pen with, you can use. Um, and then the metallics and the whites, like I said, you'll have to be, you have to judge it, use a piece of scrap paper and figure out if you want to wet, wet it down too much. Because the more you wet it down, the more it breaks down the fibers in your paper and the harder it is to use. Um, because you have to keep doing it. And the more you do it, these are very, very thin tips. The more you do it, the more you're going to hurt the paper. So I try to get a big glob on at one time. So I tend to not water it down and then re-dip too many times, which doesn't hurt anything. So I've got my two little white blobs and we're going to let them dry. And then we're going to come back with some pencil to see how it takes pencil over the top of it because I've never tried before. Might as well figure it out. So give me a few moments. I'm going to go dry this and I'll be right back. Okay, so now we're all dry and I've come back. I have a couple more things that I thought of while I was drying and cleaning up a bit. Some things I've learned from trial and error. When you're filling up your ink, you don't need to go further than halfway up the beveled chamber. You don't have to go up to this ball. You don't have to fill this all up. In fact, the more ink that you put inside the bevel, the more chance you have of it splotching, like when you push down, or ink dripping down really fast and just going everywhere. So halfway is perfectly acceptable because you can, if you're trying to write, you can always re-dip and get more ink. If you're coloring, you can always re-dip and get more ink. The last thing you want is to finish a coloring page, go in to put your highlights on, and throw white ink everywhere because you went, you know, too hard on the ink inside or you had it too wet um so it's best to just take it slow and use a little ink at a time no shame in redipping. so i pulled this rainbow pencil because why not we're not trying to uh do anything fancy we're just trying to see what we can do so this is the ph martin's pen white for technical pens and can we go over it we can, and we do not erase the white. The white is coming out of the middle because that was already a light spot. Let's turn it for darker colors. 
it's the darkest we've got on here is this purple which of course we're nowhere near but we can get color on it and then this one is the Bombay white so if you accidentally go over the white lines that you've blotted out with this on your coloring book page you will not take the white off you really can't color over it to change the color of it though um so that's what we've learned what else let's see so in order i would say this is the order of my favorite whites and this one i'm still using because i still have it um and again anything you want you can use watercolors watercolor pens tombos uh what i used was the Aqua Tricolor Spectrum Noirs in greens. Um, and what's really cool too is you can use more than one thing. Like if you do the paintbrush method that I showed when I used the Aqua marker, put a little bit on it, put a little bit above it in a different color, eventually the colors will change. These brushes, I'm sorry, I hit the table, are monoline, much like a regular ballpoint pen. Most pens that you'll use are monoline. They make one size line all over the page no matter where you turn it if i turn it to its side you know i can get the same size line no matter what and then there's the brush tip that you use that is not mono line so when you start writing you can have a thin line and make it thick okay so that's not mono line these pens, because of their very nature, will always be mono line. Now I'm going to grab the Eco Line watercolor in the blue because it's the easiest and quickest way for me to show anything. Because you get a lot of ink, and this is what I'm trying to show you as a writing technique if you want to add writing to your pages. So if you were to do this, it would come out and it would all be the same, like a mono line one size no matter how you hold the pen everything is one size and if you wanted to try brush lettering or like modern calligraphy whatever you would have to do what's called faux calligraphy where you would add your thick lines and then fill them in that's the only way that this pen will do something like that so there's another helpful trick if you're going to use that in your books like i said um i think i i haven't made my thumbnails or labeled my video yet but i'm going to be labeling it how i use my dip pen in coloring books and in journaling and this is how i do it because i don't necessarily write in my coloring books but there are people who do like i said johanna does i'm sure there's plenty of others as well and I'm just not thinking of them right now. But you can get different thicknesses. You just have to basically be drawing your writing. You know, instead of just blah, 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 write, write, write. You know, you can't just do that. You have to actually. And you can see that's a lot of ink that I got out of this one dip into the ink. So there we go. That is how I use my inks for coloring and for hand lettering and the only thing you should probably take away from this is that you have to practice you have to try it out if you find that your ink is too thick and it doesn't flow water it down and you can even like when you're watering it down in like a palette just dip your thick ink into the palette and use that too so you get all your ink and you get it you these things last forever anyway all this ink but you get more use out of your ink I'm gonna stand up now and just show this up close so you can see oh and the other thing, for those inks that I got in the kit that um, do this to you when you open them, I got an ink well, and I will be dip, I will putting one color of the ink in here at one time so that I can use it when I write and things, and I'll change it out as it dies. But I'm going to stand up now and just show you the golds and whites and how we did not destroy the white areas with the pencil. And again, this is the Windsor Newton Silver which is hard to see. I'm not getting the sparkle that I get in person, and as are these, and they're hard for me to see. This is the Windsor & Newton Gold, which I can see the sparkle. And then 
This one over here is the Eco Line Gold. And we did the Eco Line Gold to make this line. And I have the Eco Line Gold spread out over here when I was trying to clean off my brush. So that is my dip pens. And if you have any questions or anything you want to know about the inks I used, I will list below in order of my favorites. But if you have any questions about anything, feel free to ask me in the comments. And if I missed enough points or people want to know more about this, I'll do a second video on it. But this is at least a good start. So until next time, my friends, have a colorful day. Bye. Congratulations, you made it to the end of the video. Yay! Now make sure you hit the like and subscribe buttons and hit that little bell down there so you get notifications for when the next video comes up.